Didn't see anyone at the Bourget's. Yeah, because we know a lot of people in the neighborhood. So, and I look for that because I like to wave to people. Right. You're um, a stay-at-home mom. You're you're home. Yeah, you get to I, see people. Uh, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. I present to you another worldwide exclusive high definition video this evening. You're in for a real treat. I've previously released Sherry Papini's interrogation where she's confronted. And I do have the best possible version of that that's ever been released. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link down below in the description. As for this video, this is her first interview slash interrogation four days after she returned on Thanksgiving after she went missing from being fake adult napped for three weeks. Nobody knew if she was dead or alive during those three weeks. Her friends, family, and loved ones were worried sick about her. Well, this is what she has to say for herself shortly after she returns home, four days after Thanksgiving. And I'm going to be right here alongside you watching this video. You're never truly alone while you're watching videos here at Crime Circus because I'm always watching with you. Anyways, let's see what Sherry has to say for herself during this interview. For, the, for you, for that first time, to be able to say, you know what, I'm sure to pee. And this is what I want right now. Nobody's going to tell me any different. Um, nothing's going to happen to me. You can't do anything to me that I've already been through to make me do what you want. Um, and if that was that was the point that where you were at in in my own head when you said that. I walked out of the room smiling, like, um, because it it was awesome to see somebody who hasn't been. You didn't let it eat you up. Um, Everybody, you fought every day um, in ways that we'll never know, ways that you'll probably never remember. Um, but you did because you were able, very first time I talked to you, nope, leave. You might as well not be here until I have tea. And <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You're not well, my husband. No, you... I know I'm not your husband. He's kind of. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> you remember you that day? in the room and yeah. I saw your face and I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the man I'm looking for. Yeah. I, yeah, no. I knew yeah. exactly what that face looks like. And, uh, yeah. But, well, because I'd already kicked a bunch of people out before yeah. you even got there. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't know who the guy was that was in there. I want to say he was one of the CHP. I kicked him out twice. Um, <laughs> was he the big older guy with the chains? Where uh -uh. The other part? Well, I don't trust technology, especially when it's not mine. Uh, I think we're good there, but I just want to run my just audio for backup. Uh, so that way I don't screw something up. I'm just looking for a closer outlet. There. there was a little extension cord. Yeah. Is yeah. that there's there's my no, extension cord? So it's going to be on the total. Gotcha. Uh, there was a blonde woman, a, a smaller blonde woman. Yeah. Was she CHP or was no, she? No, she was Yellow County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Um, but there was, I, I don't know what he was. I want to say he was CHP because when the, what was the lady with the short black hair? Yeah, she was the ID tech. She was, the ID tech. She was great. Yeah. And um, she was seemed to be very protective. Mm -hmm. And... Um, because she was kind of talking to me a little bit and I was I was very I was very angry and I was very frustrated because when they first pulled up I asked them multiple times to cut off the zip tie because my hand was like turning blue like my hand it was cut off and they wouldn't do it and that was very frustrating to me that no one would cut it off and I was telling her that and I said you know they wouldn't let me talk to my husband I want my husband and they weren't even untying me and he said, we did untie you. And I was like, get the fuck out. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because he yelled back at me like, we did. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Um, and How long did yeah. it take you to get there as opposed to everything it, else? Yeah, no. So I just was very, um, very angry. And that, and that guy really didn't care for him much. Huh. Um, it's, it's easy to do that. Yeah. Um, well, let's... I'd uh, can I use the ladies' room? Yes, please? absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Oh. Uh, she'll probably bring it up, and I know you guys know the right questions to ask, but just because I've been here, there's a few things that I went through that already. Um, I can explain what the markings mean. Okay, can, Keith, can you say 
what today's date is for me? Just do it. What's today's date? It's the 28th, right? November 28th, okay. 2016. So, during this, like we've already talked about, this is going to bring up a lot of the old stuff. Um, things are, because regardless of how you feel right now, this is stressful. Um, we're gonna be talking about stuff. You know you're gonna to have to start talking about some stuff that you may uh, have been keeping back on purpose, maybe, um, and you know you're gonna to have to go there. This, this is super stressful. I've been on the other side of it because I get in trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Uh, I'm the old man, and I'm in the sergeant's office going, very, like, uh, even I do this for a living, it's still, to be on the other side of it, it's hard. I know it's stressful. We all know it's stressful. Um, so it's going to trigger, trigger stress responses that you will, you haven't learned to understand yet. Um, so if it gets too much, you're in charge of this. We're not, I'm not, I don't want anything that you're not willing to give me. I don't want, I don't want to push you farther than you need, think you can go. Um, we're here for you. I'm here for you. Um, if this turns into something that we need to do once a week, we'll do this once a week. Um, if this is something we can do all at once, we can get it done all at once. But I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, you're in control of this. Um, we're not here trying to make this work sort of, um, at all. Um, so if we get to that point and it's too much, if we just need to take a break, tell us. Um, if I notice that we're going to need to take a break, I'm going to say that. Um, my goal is to continue to help you survive this. Um, so that's, that's, that's the rules of the interview at this point. If it's too much, tell me. If I think it's too much, I'll tell you. Um, so you're still in charge, you're still in control, you're still in the go get my husband. Uh, you got that. So, and just so you don't think that I'm being rude, you know, there's other things that are going on, obviously. So, if you see me grab my phone and if you see me texting, by all means, I'm asking permission to be rude because I may have to text somebody right. for stuff that's going on. Okay. If I walk, get up and walk out, please don't take that as well. He's being rude or you said something that is okay. There's, I, I'm just laying the ground rules so that because we've learned in the past, you know, when you start doing this stuff, that sometimes people take offense to that. But by, so I'm that guy. Um, so uh, it shouldn't be Kyle because everything's going to be funneled through me if there's something going on back at the office because there is the other part of this investigation that's currently going on. Um, so I just want to make sure that you understand that. I mean, just like Kyle says, is, you know, I'm not going to start out. Okay, tell me about this. Basically, it's we're going to um, just ask you to tell us your information whenever we get going, and you just tell us everything. That, as you want, and as we go, we'll ask some questions, clarify some stuff, and hopefully by the end of today, we have a very good idea of what's going on. I mean, so it's, you're, like Kyle says, you're in control. You need to take a break. Say when, and we'll go off air and all that kind of stuff, okay? I feel like sometimes it's easier with my eyes closed. To sure. Is that okay? Absolutely. Doing Absolutely. I... You can do anything you want. Other than assault me or hit Kyle, you can hit Kyle all you want. I'm good with that. <laughs> Just don't hit me. Uh, so it's, that's what I mean. If you need to, if you, that's that's everything you need to do, you can do. And we brought an easel if you want to draw stuff. We brought we brought a resource. Keep, keep saying that I'm like terrible at drawing. Yeah. Well, no, we brought. I, we have the terrible pamphlet over there because things, obviously we've been trying to do cars, and I'm like I'm like the worst car person <laughs> ever. When it comes to that, he's actually like machine gun. Like enough, and you know and, more, and that, one more. And that goes into play with me. If if I hear you talking about something, I'm not going to stop and interrupt you. And I may have a thought, or may have knowledge where I may get on my phone. And I may have I have a person at my office that's designated to come here to bring me things if I need them. Okay. So um, you know, the, there's no one else outside. I don't know, um, but if I need to, if you're talking about something, it's like. That makes sense to me because of something I saw. I don't, I'm just giving you a suggestion. I may text somebody, hey, bring me X, Y, or Z. And they may come and we may show you. I mean, that's how it's going to work out. So um, obviously we had to relocate, 
you know, our office here. Yeah. Um, so logistics is a little problem. It's no big deal. You're, we're a mile away. I have people waiting there. Okay. Um, stuff like that. So I just want to make sure you understand that I don't want it to distract you. Okay. Sure. So. Um, I, 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 and I apologize. I feel like everything's distracting me because <laughs> I can see outside right now. <laughs> Would it be, so, do you want to move somewhere? No. Do you want I, to go to the couch? Do you want to have your back to the beautiful river? I can close those if you want. What do you want to do? Let me be distracted. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And if you see me get up or put my head down, because you know I am good at interrupting yeah. when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> because I might think of an idea. I don't want to do that. So if you see me go on walls or I got to get and get a drink of water, it's not. I will always be. I'm not going to leave the area. But it's mainly because me, because I'm like, oh, I really want to say something. <laughs> So I don't, I'm not going to do that. Are you allowed? You, you can talk, right? He can, but we don't want to interrupt more you. for you. Because even on the first day, I was asking you questions, and I was like, oh, that's not important. Let's get to this other thing. And they're like, no. Let's see <laughs> no what that's that's not, and I was like, no, no, no. We need to know this. When you were using the restroom, I had I had to admonish Keith. Keith, okay, <laughs> Chill don't interrupt her. <laughs> okay. It's so, interrupting that breaks your thought process. Yeah. It's not the question. It's just <clears throat> sometimes the amount of questions and on questions on top of questions before you can fully answer um, we're trained to remember, like, wait for that pause, like, once somebody's done talking, and then we can interject, like, where everybody else just wants the answer tomorrow. No, let's just get, why, why, why? Like, was it green? Was it That's yellow? Me. Was it black? Who, what, where, why, when, now? I don't get it. We got this. Um, so we're not admonishing you for doing it. <laughs> we're just trying to keep your, your mind going on the same track it was a second ago. Okay. Um, the other thing that we, I need to add, we have somebody available also um, with a camera that has alternate light sources uh, that it can pick up the different bruises that even though we can't see, I don't know, it seems like, I don't know how it works. I know it's got lots and lots of different lenses um, and it will take photos all at once so it can bring up the different, so like the, the layers of bruising, the layers of bruising, the scar on the back, hopefully to be able to pick up what exactly that is. Because we're still unclear. Yeah, um, all the scabs are gone now. Yeah. Sure That's something we, before we get done, we'll, I mean, we're, we'll touch that topic. Yeah. That's a camera you already used? or No, no. it's oh. one that we have. It's one we got from DOJ. That, okay. As it takes photographs, it has um, infrared and it has built-in filters. So as it takes the photographs, it does it. Because right now, the photographs we have, we have to run them through a filter. Uh, and so I was gonna say she took a lot of pictures. She did. Yeah. No. Okay. And the and the photographs of the scarring on the back. It we ran it through several filters and we're able to clear it up a little bit. But we DOJ has another camera that actually, as it takes the picture, it has its stuff built in, so it's more refined. So that's probably something we can worry about later this afternoon when we get done talking. If you're cool with female female crime scene tech, come over, take some more photographs of you to try to help you guys get some answers to some questions. Yes. So that I, we're not gonna go there now. Yeah. But <laughs> it's for later. It's, it's, <laughs> once we get to that point today, we can. Have, she's on standby at my office. She can be here. It's not the same one. No. Okay. It's, it's one of my our girls. It's not okay. the yellow. She's a good. She's a good lady. I afterwards we you talking about Stephanie at Yolo County. Yeah. She's a great lady. I'd love to have her work for me. Yeah, I like her awesome. a lot. She um, was great. But I have another lady. So I don't know. What we were talking. Uh, bigger lady with the short dark hair. Short dark hair. She was taking her pictures and swabbies and stuff like that. Yeah. So anyways, that's, she was great. Before we leave today, we can approach that and have her come over here and privately take photographs and look at that stuff and get that stuff squared away. So hopefully we can get some better answers for you. Okay. So, you cool? Yeah, I was going to ask a question. Go ahead. <laughs> she wanted to see some photos. I mean, we took some on my phone only because there's been a couple times where she goes... She'll remember something. Oh, I, I hit my head on the part of a car, or I remember okay. this. And I think if she did see these yep. photos, so I was wondering if she would ever get a chance to see the good photos, not my yep. little iPhone ones. Uh, did you bring? I just have pictures of the cars. I didn't bring those. Those are those. I can have those brought over. I have them. But yeah, that's why the laptop's here. So okay. at whatever point, if you think at some point, if I saw a picture of this, it would probably help me remember. Then we'll pull up the picture. Okay. Okay. So. You're giving me a lot of latitude here. <laughs> this isn't so. Rather than, I think we all have an understanding of the game game rules and plan, and and it doesn't matter. I can always stop you and ask questions in the middle anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
And at the end of this, you can ask, ask whatever questions you want. We will do our best. So we'll get started. A lot of this, again, was just really, I, um, oh, 21. I don't, I mean, I still, I, I still don't know you that piece. Okay. <laughs> um, but, um, but I have absolute faith in my husband. And, um, I think, um, taking him away would make things harder. So I, I feel like it will be easier with Keith. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. That's if you and, want him here, you here. And I, I still, I'm mm -hmm. feeling very nervous because I still don't really know you guys. I mean, I kind of do. Is but there anything we can do to help you feel more comfortable no, with us? Not. <laughs> um, Kyle, well, it is helpful concerned. because obviously it you know, seemed like you know, felt like you were concerned about Keith not being here or not. Oh, yeah. I can't be <laughs> alone with so, people I don't know. So I he's here. Yeah. He's here for the duration. That's, he's. That's I'm cool with it. We weren't <laughs> even worried about it. That wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't even a topic or question that we've even brought up because from day one, I already told Kyle Keith's going to be there. That's a no-brainer already. And that's she, she needs him there. So you know, that question is... I'm on the table. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'll help you. We're we're here for you. So if you have questions you want to ask of us, personal questions, make you do that. We're we're here for you. Uh, things come up later. Things come up right now. I'm 100% here for you. Uh, like I was for Keith. Every time he called me, I called him back as soon as I could. I texted. I never let a text go unanswered. Um, I will continue to be that. I'm still yours. I'm still Keith. I'm I'm here until this thing's over. Even once it's over, you guys still have that. This, I'm a permanent part of your life now. <laughs> as long as you want it. Whether you want it or not. <laughs> uh, even once this case gets done, they, they go to prison. Um, we wrap it all up. I am I will still work for the sheriff's office. I'm still here for you. Uh, I mean, I've, this is my, what is it, 16? This is my seventh year in investigations for the most part. I was uh, a frontline detective like him uh, for three years and then I promoted to sergeant and so now I oversee the unit. And from 2009, 2010, you know, some of my cases when I started working majors, um, homicides and stuff like that, um, I still have contact with uh, family members on anniversary dates with those people. I still call them and say, hey, uh, just check in with you, see how you're doing. There's a man that lives in Wisconsin uh, his daughter was murdered, and every August uh, I give him a call, or he calls me. It's usually he calls me ahead of time when he's on the road. Says, "Hey, I was thinking about you." Today. I said, "Yeah," and it's just that's a five-minute conversation, and because that's the impact that this stuff has. There's, uh, I think, all but maybe two cases that I have contact with people where they just call out of the blue and say, "Hey, I saw your name in the I get I saw your name in the news today." And wanted to call and tell you, hey, it's thinking of you and good luck. Uh, I got several of those calls in the last couple of weeks um, from down south. Uh, so it's, you know, a lot of times people have involvement or little involvement with law enforcement. They see the uniform, you, you sign your ticket, and you go pay your fine, right? I mean, that's, that's usually the most extent that everyone has with an officer. Is the officer nice? Well, yeah, he's just doing his job. Then there's the other side where you have peace officers, detectives, investigators, whatever you want to call them that are invested in people's lives, that have a, okay, I don't have to care for you. I don't have to care for Keith. I don't have to care for anybody, right? That's, that's our God-given ability. We don't have to care for people. But there's something that grows inside of us as we get mature, as we tenure as law enforcement, when we think, you know what, there's a little bit more than just, you know, writing tickets and taking people to jail every day where, um, you know, there's an investment. There's good stuff too. Yes. In there somewhere. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I know Kyle's heart. Um, Kyle and I have had one-to-one -one conversations. Uh, Kyle and I have had teared-up conversations. Okay, Kyle and I have been shaking our heads at the same time, trying to figure things out. I mean, there's emotion behind it. We're just not, just not, you know, brazen, you know, cops that just don't have feelings or care. Okay, uh, I've cried in the shower. I try not to cry at home a lot in front of the kids because they don't like seeing it. I've cried in the shower because. Because of frustration. I'm tearing up now. Okay. I mean that's that's the level of care that you have. 
I don't, uh, I mean, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's a heart involved when we actually care or give a shit about people. Okay. And for whatever reason, God has uh, allowed it that he and I are on your team, that he's on your team, and that I'm allowing him to run with it. So, I mean, you don't know who we are. That's who I am. I know that's who he is. is. Right. <laughs> and he says you're okay, you're important. That's what I so That's where trust. we're at. Yeah. So if you want to, it's, it's the ball's in your court. Um, I, I don't know. Um, there's certain things that are very difficult to explain. There's certain things that it's, for me, it's a feeling. It's not facts okay. so if it's if it if there's something that's not a fact if there's something that i was feeling because i don't speak spanish <laughs> but there was a lot of body language and i can understand body language okay. so there's things for me that i feel went a certain way are those okay. things that you want yep. or are those things you want me to hold back because they're not facts you can tell me anything you want you tell us. You tell us what's on your mind, what's on your heart, and what you thought, what you felt, what you smelled, what you. You tell us everything. Okay. And then we'll put then through the investigation and through follow-up questions. So to you, we'll, everything is important. Yes, yes. Okay. Yep. There's nothing. There's no stupid comments. There's no stupid questions. There's no stupid answers. Everything I want to know. Everything on your that, mind. See, and that's because I'm thinking about everything a lot, and that's where I'm like, is that important? Yes. Is that important? I don't know. Maybe I should move on because that's probably not important. <laughs> but then something's like, no, that's important. But when you get so. into little, little cases, big cases, little cases, all all fall on one little thing. All of them. Like no matter how far you've gone back, no matter how much, um, it's that one little thing. Like, you know what? There's a there's a red. Uh, red cow or red um, throw pillow, like here. Like in the big scheme of things, how many people have a red throw pillow? Probably a couple. But how many are going to have a red throw pillow that I showed up to? It shouldn't be anybody for us. It shouldn't be anybody for me. <laughs> and, no, and just so you know, there's only one person at my office, that two people that know that we're here. The detective and my lieutenant. Ah, UPS guy. Still got So with with that, it's that one little piece that maybe that throws it all together, and we don't want to miss that. Okay. Um, so it is important. Okay. Also, my skin is still very itchy everywhere, so I apologize. Everything is itchy all everywhere. No problem. <laughs> Where would you like to start? I have no idea. Okay, so on November 2nd, 2016, what happened? To start us off on the day. From the beginning. The beginning. Yeah, start with uh, there and see what happens. Greetings. I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Established Titles. It's a project based on historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as leds or lords and ladies in English. Recently, I became the owner of a plot of land in Edelson, Scotland. And as the owner of some land in Scotland, I have officially obtained the right and title of Lord. That's right, y'all. I'm Lord Drip Drop now. Has a nice ring to it. Established Titles offers title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland with an official certificate and crest. Each certificate features a unique number which gives you an exact location of your land, and mine's right down there. I think I might even try to set up this circus tent down there one of these days. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. They plant a tree with every order and work with the global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. And you can even officially change your name to add the title Lord or Lady on things like credit cards, plane tickets, etc. 
and you can even update your dating profile if you have one. These make a great last minute gift and they even have couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. Makes a great gift for yourself as well. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will be right next to my plot of land. Really close, within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our little crime circus kingdom. This really does make an amazing last minute gift and Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code Crime Circus, you'll receive an additional 10% off. Please go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Crime Circus to get your gifts now and help support this channel. Thank you very much for your time. Now let's get back to the video. Let's talk about the Christmas present <laughs> with Keith. Okay. Um, I started wrapping a Christmas present for Keith. A little American flag pillow that Tyler and I had picked out the night before at Kohl's. Um, and I couldn't find any tape. I had taped one side, ran out of tape, and then couldn't find any more tape anywhere else. Got very frustrated, left it on the ground and left it open because there was no more tape to complete the wrapping of it. Um, <coughs> Did my usual, uh, did my usual routine, fed the chickens, uh, cleaned the house, cleaned everything, just the usual. Nothing, yeah. Text messaged my husband. <laughs> to come home for lunch. <laughs> Which, it, it, you know, looking back, is quite embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, thanks for, you know, that last text message. Honey, will you please come home to have sex with your wife for lunch? <laughs> um, yeah. So you text him to come home for lunch. And we're, and we're cool. Okay, we, we know the connotation. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um. Oh, that morning was <clears throat> weird too. Tyler had woken up from a dream, and he—I don't—I I don't know if either of your children have ever done this, but when your kids wake up and they're like shaky and oh, it's the worst! It's the worst. Tyler had woken up um, very shaky and wanting Keith, and um, and was very scared, but couldn't remember why he was scared. He was just scared, and he wanted Keith. Kind of an odd way for him to wake up. Um. So you went to daycare that morning, right? You remember that? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about your drive to daycare. Isn't that ordinary? Just the normal day? Yep, yeah, okay. absolutely. Just the normal. Fed the kids breakfast. Um, dropped them off at Pandora's. Nothing unusual. It wasn't even a hard goodbye. Sometimes they're like, no, don't leave me. Wasn't even like a hard, difficult goodbye. Okay. And then when you left daycare, tell me about what you did after daycare. Drove back home. Okay. Um, did my usual. Put on my poop shoes. Went out to the chicken coop. Cleaned the coop. Uh, and then just started my usual cleaning of everything. Okay. Keith had been coming home for lunch pretty often um, and had been doing like the at-home lunches, which has been nice. We've gotten our little alone mommy and daddy time. <laughs> lunch time. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, been, it had been nice that he's been, you know, coming home pretty early and stuff like that. Um, um, Anything out of the ordinary on your way home? Anything out of the ordinary uh, when you got home or out taking care of the chickens? Any, anything that caught your eye or hear anything out of the ordinary? Mm -hmm. Chickens, by the way. Uh, how many chickens do you have? We used to have 10. Okay. Source, sorry. Source subject? We lost a couple. Gotcha. Yeah, no, we used to have 10. Um, I have chickens. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to have every type of chicken. I'm pretty sure it was the two Americanas that mm. we lost, one of which was one of my favorite ones, yeah. Lady Hawk. Yeah. 
<laughs> and America. Um, my favorite chicken is still there, though, which is she's human size. Um, is that the silver lace? Uh, Do you have a silver lace? We have a black, an all-black Orpington yeah. who's gigantic yeah. and soft. And um, Violet's so cute because she, you know, she wants to feed the chickens all the mm -hmm. time. And the kids are great with the chickens. And Tyler can actually do a checkup head-to-toe mm. with chickens. And Violet would feed um, uh, Mary Bell. And Mary Bell would kind of walk up to her because she wants you to pick her up like a baby and cuddle her. Mm -hmm. And Violet will be like, this giant chicken's chasing me. <laughs> and then she'll run and Mary Bell won't, won't chase her. She just wants to be with her. So then they're just like running around in circles and Violet's getting chased by a giant chicken. So it's adorable. But yes, no, the chickens are, we love our chickens. Right. What kind of chickens do you have? I have, uh, I have two. Um, uh, hang on a second. I wasn't thinking about talking about chickens right now. Um, <laughs> Rhode Island Reds, Sussex, Sussex. No, uh, Delaware, uh, okay. Whites. Uh -huh. uh, they're all hens. Uh -huh. I have two Delawares. Um, then I have uh, two uh, sex links, the red ones, the red stars, mm -hmm. which they're bred between the, they're the sex links of a uh, uh, Delaware hen and a uh, Rhode Island rooster. And then I have a black star, and she's crossed between a, uh, a barred rock and a Rhode Island rooster. And then I have uh, a barred rock. I had two, lost one, raccoon. Uh, and she's she's big. She's got a, the comb on her is so huge it like hangs over her eye. I mean it's like a it's like she's wearing a red beret. It's she, uh, but she's she's the loving one. She'll come up to you and want to sit with you. Mm -hmm. And then I have a a little Rhode Island red. Uh, used to have two, raccoon. Um, and that's so I just asked, I have the seven. So and they're molting right now, so they look like. Oh, they're, they're a mess when such, they molt. They're, they're so, so ugly when they molt. Yeah, I, I don't know how yesterday I was checking them, make sure that they're all cool and checking for bump feet and you know all that stuff. And Tyler, like, my four-year-old can do that yeah. right now. So I was like, which is really cool. Thank God I'm not trying to sell you guys because nobody would buy them because <laughs> they look so horrible right now. Yeah. But so anyways, I, I they're they're fun. That's my thing. I've had them for about two years. It's so wonderful with our children, yeah. and that's something I love very much. Oh, yeah. I'm very much attached to that because. And that was, um, you know, the 4-H and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's wonderful. And it's so great that Tyler, you know, he knows. He even, mm -hmm. like, knows, like, that vent of that chicken. That chicken's not laying an egg. I'm like, what? How do you know this already? You're it's four good. years old. Yeah. No, it's very fun. No, it's, it's, it. it's good for him. And chicken's and all the trimming, so. Sorry, man. Going this way. That's right. I pulled back. you that way because <laughs> I brought up the chicken thing. No, it's nice to talk about something nice. Um... Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, wrap it up present, got frustrated, changed into running clothes. Okay. Um, I love so much that my husband knows my clothing so well that he knew what I was wearing. And what were you wearing? I was wearing that pink Nike hooded sweatshirt with the thumb holes that I hate. <laughs> and the black tight, uh, I don't want to say they're leggings because they're a little thicker than that, but black, tight, uh, stripey, not really stripey, just kind of black and white speckled, we'll say. Okay. And my black and white checkered, are they Under Armour or Nike? I think they're Under Armour, right? Under Armour tennis shoes. On the pink top, is it all pink or is it with gray? No, there's pink on the, up to the shoulders, and then it's gray here, and I'm pretty sure the hood is pink. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's pink, and it has those little annoying trendy thumb holes that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. I've tried it, I've tried it, but I guess it's for snowboarding. So they keep your sweatshirt underneath your uh, gloves. So you put those in. So it's only it's a sn for snowboarding, from what I understood, because I was getting mad at it. Like, what? Put it on a running jacket. Then. Um, yeah. yeah. It looks cool. I don't think it looks cool. <laughs> I think it looks obnoxious, but yeah. He's wearing gloves. Oh. Your running gloves, I'm assuming. Yeah. No. Really wasn't wearing running gloves. And then. Um, 
did my usual, started my app. I've been training um, for a race. It's been, well, okay. I got implants and it's been a long time since I got to run because you have to heal from the implants. Um, and me and running are, I, I want to be a better runner. I like to run, but it's difficult for me. Um, so like getting back in the swing of it, I had an app that I would use that does, you know, run this far walk, run this far walk. And it amps you up to like a 5k. Um, because a few years back I had done the, um, the Casa superhero mm -hmm. run and, um, I didn't think I was going to be anywhere close to it, but I wanted to get back to um, doing that because I loved that run. It was it was really fun. Um, so, yeah, I was doing the, I want to say it's called the 5K Runner app mm -hmm. that I was using. Um, and then I, there's a song I listen to every time I run. Um, so I put the song on. What's that song? Uh, our wedding song. <laughs> it's a good pace keeper because there's a couple songs I listen to, but that one is the only one that I listen to that doesn't make me run too fast. And it puts me in good mood. Um, so that would be uh, Michael Buble, Everything. Their wedding song. Um, stretched a little bit on the porch like I usually do. Started running. Saw the two, maybe there was three. Uh, guys cutting the tree at what's his name's house? The guy that did our Toby, mm -hmm. thank you. Toby's house uh, was on was on the left side of the road. Then a car was coming over that hump right before Connie's, so I changed to the other side of the road, waved to that person. Uh, turned right onto. From, okay, so down Casa, turned right onto Sunrise. Um. You're doing good. Did you see anybody outside when you were running? Not after Connie's. I did see people outside when I was running, but not after Connie's. Um, was there any, view, any other vehicles besides Connie's? Or the one it wasn't after? Connie's. It was a Sorry. neighbor driving down in front of Connie's. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I didn't know who that was. I oh. hadn't recognized her before. It was a female. I didn't Sounds like a before. female that was coming out to pick up her niece. Okay. In that area, we talked. We spoke. I think to her. you said that. And yeah. She was. She was on her way out to. I think pick up her niece, take her to the mall. Well, so. everybody waves in our neighborhood too. Mm -hmm. When you go buy cars or anything, everybody kind of you know does the wave in our neighborhood. Um, but I can see. I always look at Christina's parents' house, which mm -hmm. is the one. Um, right when you get the paved area, mm -hmm. um, because I grew up with Christina and her parents were there. And I lived literally around the corner from them my entire life. My childhood, I lived around the corner from them. And now in my adult life, I live around the corner from them. So whenever I go there, I'm always looking at their house because I'm always waiting to wave to them or see them or um, didn't see them. Didn't see anyone at the Bourget's. Um, yeah, because we know a lot of people in the neighborhood, so, and I look for that, because I like to wave to people. Right. You're um, a stay at home mom, you're, you're home. Yeah. You get to I, see people. Uh, yeah, didn't see anybody else. Um, did my absolutely usual, uh, got to the mailboxes, or um, just before the mailboxes started to slow down, the, it, I was just about to transition into walk. So it's run, walk, run, walk. Right when I got towards the mailboxes, it was right before it was going to say, no, no, 
We have listened to the app. It's oh, God. pretty powerful. Yeah. <laughs> now walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now slow You're down. You're halfway through. Right? You're yeah. doing good. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a funny app. So you get almost to the mailboxes and you think Sorry, about, my lips are like clap cracking and Do you need some water? No. No, everything's like just so you're about to, right here. Sorry. <laughs> you're good. Uh, you're about to the mailboxes. About to the mailboxes. And these are the mailboxes near. At the end of the Sunrise Drive, my mm. my mailbox. And if I I forgot to tell you this one tidbit when we laid out the ground rules, sometimes we're going to ask some dumb questions for clarification. Like I just asked because I had I knew it was there, but for our case management, sometimes we have to ask clarifying questions. So if you if I ask a question or Kyle asks a question, you're like, are you really that dumb? Okay, don't ask that mailbox. Okay, no. It's something you probably have a form that needs to be it's, filled out for something? No, something, it's just or? it's because in court processes, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just digress for a minute and take a break. No, that's okay. You say you were running to your mailboxes or to the mailboxes, and we, and we move on through that. And two years down the road, he or I are in court, and somebody wants to ask us questions about the mailboxes, well, how do you know it was her mailboxes? Did you ask her if it was the mailboxes? Um, so that's the kind of crap we got to deal with sometimes. Got it, okay. So okay. that's why we ask some of those dumb questions because we get, not so much on the prosecution side, but she knows what we're talking about, <laughs> defense attorneys uh, right. to try to poke holes, to try to uh, Well, and do Keith and I the, had so had that, yeah, Keith and I have had that conversation as well because I told him, one of um, you know things that I'm uh, so b before all of this, I watched those shows. Mm -hmm. I watched those shows, and I you know, and I've read Elizabeth Smart's book. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I was the weird stay at home mom that watched the like you know random. Mm -hmm. What are those shows called? Uh, True crime story. Yeah, Take but the in. yeah, like the uh, reality mm -hmm. reality TV. I was like this stupid. I wasn't soap operas, but it was reality TV. I watched all that stuff, so I, um, like, I'm thinking about that now, where I'm like, oh, my God, someone is going to be on her side defending her against all of this crap, and because I watched those shows, sure. so I understand what you are saying. That's, and that's where I'm coming from when we right. ask, when, if you, if we ask a question, like, are you really that dense? You don't know which mailboxes I'm talking about. It's not because I'm dense. It's because I'm safeguarding us down the road so we so we can right not have to deal with all that I shit. I understand. <laughs> Sorry for and cussing, it's just that's what it is. I've been cussing more than you have <laughs> lately. No. So and and that's another thing that I'm thinking of about, you know, like am I gonna be able to do that without running out of my seat and choking somewhere? Well that's I mean it's just and that's that's difficult too for me because I told Keith like I, and that's another thing I'm scared about. I don't know you guys. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're in my corner. I know my husband. I know my husband's in my corner. But, um, you know, there was a lot of other things. And I know that you guys know everything about everything. And yeah. That's embarrassing. And well. And yucky and that's weird for me that's weird for me this is very weird for me yeah because i know that you know yeah, everything no about <laughs> everything and that's well and, the, and i know keith awkward know, we all know what we're that's talking the best way to and say those that are some that's very we, awkward for me well I, I i get it i understand that kyle understands that i think we all understand that but um that's that's not a problem for us as far as Happen to deal with that. It's not, we're not looking bad at anybody. We're not casting judgment on anyone. It is what it is, okay? Stuff happens. The problem is, is that that stuff is out there. We need to capture it, we need to clean it, and we need to be accountable to it as far as the information and move on from it. It is what it is. No one's perfect. No one does everything right. I mean, there's, there's no problems as far as that stuff goes on that you've alluded to that we know about. Okay, then, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about stuff. We'll talk about people we talk to. I got no problem with that. I'll, I'll tell you everything that I can. There's nothing, Kyle will tell you everything that he can. Okay? It may hurt. 
Okay? I mean, yes. <laughs> and I'm empathetic to that. I know Keith's empathetic to that. But the bottom line is, is how we move on from here, how things get rehabilitated, and how lives get put back together, and how we all get uh, move on from this and become stronger. Okay? So all that stuff that you've alluded to, not a problem for me, not a problem for Kyle. Okay? Keith's right here with you. Okay? We're all good. Okay? Is this mine? This is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when those topics and, and that stuff comes up between us here at the table, it is what it is. Okay? I would... I don't want to use that. I don't want to use the word "I don't care" because that has some, such a negative connotation. But in reality, that stuff. When I say I, I don't care, or when Scott Kyle says I don't care, that means it's all good. It's, it is what it is. And we're not gonna. Well, what about this? And this is not true. We're not gonna do that crap. That's not the. That's not what we're here for. But it is part and parcel to this investigation. And we found it. We found it. We investigated it. We ruled it out. So that's that's how these things go. Like when. Dot and the I's crossed the T's. We're, we went and found everything we can for several different reasons. Um, it's like how the how this investigation tore out. There was really three things going on there was, um, during this investigation. We didn't want to skip one thing. We didn't want to skip over one detail um, because that's that's when we make mistakes. That's when we miss it, and that's when we move so beyond it that we can't even come back to it. Um, so yeah. Well, so, I mean. Even to the point that, what was it, on Wednesday? Uh, somebody went to jail because of this investigation. <laughs> the guy up off of Copper Canyon. I walked an arrest warrant through on a registration person who was playing games with us, and we went and paid him a visit and searched through his nasty hoof. I mean, all of us almost cued from the filth he was living in. And he went to jail. I mean, so we, I mean, that's a registrant up off of Copper Canyon. I don't know if you're aware of that. We took that guy to jail. Did Kyle tell you about it? My team, uh... <laughs> Somebody told you about it? Uh, so we booted his yeah. door in. We booted, <laughs> You've got great friends. We booted, we booted his door in and woke, and woke him up. And, and he's, uh, I don't know if he's still sitting in jail because I haven't worried about it because obviously he's off my radar right now. But So what Kyle's saying, we've, we've done a lot of work. Um, so I, I don't care about that stuff and how on the outside people may say or whatever but on the inside here it is what it is and we're and we're on your side okay we're here to defend we're here to look for people that have earned the right and i don't care about you know the whole what people say about <laughs> it's easy to say that it's easy i don't care i care about here well i and care about I'm here at, i imagine that those conversations have happened in the last couple of days or yes. at least been touched a little bit yes and they're gonna, and hopefully they got brought up what I told Keith from your get go. Don't look into this anymore. It's very little to nothing. It's it's minute enough. We have to chase it. And that's what I told them. We have to look into it. We had to see it. Um, and what we investigated, we found out that it was it was minuscule, um, if anything, if you want to call it that. And that's what I told him specifically. Um, but you know, Keith, you. Yeah, no, he didn't have anything else to do that. Yeah, that. Yeah. So, um, so it wasn't, so that was from the very get-go right after um, that went down. Um, I told Keith that, uh, that it was minuscule to nothing, but we had we have to look into it. We have to, we have to sort it out, figure sure. it out. Um, and that falls on that, those two lines that I told him. It was, it was always, we were always going down two roads. The abduction, because we had nothing. Or the you know you you possibly had left because that's the only those were the only two options that we had had, and the easiest one to look at is, is if if you walked out or not. There's money. There's I can dive into you six ways from Sunday, <laughs> and I can find some stuff. Uh, but on this on this rare abduction side, we're looking at chances. I'm looking at somebody driving by noticing something minute. Uh, and now finding that person who saw that minute detail that I need, um, as opposed to you, there's paper on you, you're a normal, you, bill, you pay your bills. Like I can find those people all the time. But now, um, and that's why that investigation was always going two ways. Um, and Keith and I talked on Saturday about that. Like why, why? 
because it's easier to build up evidence on things I can go see. So yes, this might have piled up, but it never went over because the, the abduction was so small, I couldn't find anything all through all these things. That's why that was always alive. I mean, it would never have gone away um, until I talked to you. Um, and that's why that's, and there's, there's a I, lot. And of, I feel like it's just, it's just the shame. Absolutely. No, it's it's things that oh. I thought about when I was oh, there. Gotcha. It's it's the shame. Yeah, and that's that's normal. So I mean, it's. I mean, it's. Another thing I'm doing. That's all. Absolutely, but you know, all of us have all of all of us are adults, and all of us have had lives. Hey, okay. none of us here at this table are perfect, and it all depends upon where your hearts are and how you attack and how you address it and where you want to go from there. And that's that's between you guys. You know, that's on you. That's on key. Okay. It's all survivable. You know, it's all, I mean, it's, if anything, make you guys stronger and you guys go on and live your happy life. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to here to preach to you or, you know, be your marriage or therapist. Or counselor, <laughs> but I could. Like, um, but, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's some of those topics that we're going to get to whenever they come up. If, they, if you don't bring them up, then obviously we'll ask you about them. But it's not hurtful. Okay. It's, clar- it's more of clarification and, okay. and more of clarification and advisement type stuff. Like, hey, just so you know. So okay. it goes back to the conversation, the, t- the question you asked me like a little while ago. Should I say? Should I not? Is it stupid? Remember that? There's not say everything. <clears throat> I mean, that's, and I, that's why we're all here. That's why Keith's here. That's why. So don't worry about it. Okay. Redirect, just get us back on topic. So you just about get to the mailboxes, and the mailboxes at yes. Sunrise and Old Oregon Trail. Correct. Okay. Go from there if you can. Um, I'm before the mailboxes. I start to slow down. I see a vehicle go past. I see a vehicle go past Sunrise Drive to maybe like the front two tires are past the actual street sign and then it backs up. And I immediately have that feeling of that was weird. Um You're doing good, Sherry. If you're having a heart. The window goes down, but it was. It was a woman. And they back up. It's frustrating because I know I know she was wearing a hat but I can't see the color and I can't see her clothes. Okay. So the small details. Let's just worry let's let's talk about the big details. I'll make a note. He asked for help. I want to say it's maybe like a hang or something to get my attention. Is that the passenger or the, the driver? Passenger. Okay. Is the car on Sunrise right now or is it still on the no. old Oregon Trail? It's on It's on Old Oregon Trail. How far away do you think you are when when that happened? Um, when what? What are you asking? When the car stops? Um, do you know how, about how close were you? Which time? It stopped twice. Once when it went past the street sign. Once when it backed up. Which time were you asking? Both. Uh, I 
the first time, the again, it went past Sunrise Drive sign, but not all the way, backed up and stopped. Um, I want to say there's a fire hydrant right there. Um, Keep asking small questions if that helps, or you just want to need to think about. It. Or we can move on. I walked towards where the vehicle had backed up, but was still far enough away from it that um, because I was still cautious. I had my phone in my right hand and my earbuds on, and I took out my left to hear her. And then she opened the door. And then I saw the small revolver. And I immediately ducked down. I crouched down, like in a ducking, crouching. Like all the way on the ground? So like the fetal position, like, like a catcher's position? I mean, position. my knees weren't on the ground. It was almost. Um, in the Yes. It was a. Uh, Okay, so across the road, phones in my hand, earbud out, towards the vehicle, this, not all the way down, squatting, okay. not crouching, squatting, laid my phone down, um, I can't remember if she said, we don't want to hurt you, we don't want to kill you. I can't remember exactly if it's, we don't want to something, we don't want to something, we don't want to something. And then I put my phone down, as soon as I put it down, I was so mad because I couldn't call my husband, and as soon as I put it down, I... And then I turned... And I pulled my hair out because and I would have ran away and I didn't and I should have and I just that's all I <laughs> Do you wanna come back up to the table? And then I got up and went this direction. I can't remember. I can't remember lifting my leg. I can't remember the back door open. Take a drink of water if you need to. And I want to run something by you and see if this might be able to help a little bit. Take a breath and some more. You're, you're, you're good. You're recalling things from like your first person view, correct? And you're going through, you're seeing it through your own eyes. Do you understand what I mean by that? You're doing good, okay? But as you're going through this, you're, you're, you're pulling your memory from the back side of your head and trying to remember everything. And sometimes it goes back to your brain saying, I can't get there right now. It's kind of like a computer. You click on it, and the browser pops up, and it says not responding. Right? We've all been there. Okay? So sometimes your brain says, we're not accessing that part right now because it's not time. We're not ready for it. So 
I've done it in the past uh, with different cases where you look at it from a different point of view, okay? Because your mind, your body uses different parts of your brain to access different pieces of information, okay? Believe it or not, that's what happens. <clears throat> so, it may sound corny, it may sound silly, but sometimes it works and sometimes it helps the person telling the story. And for like this instance, um, if going back to before you see the car, if there was a bird, a bluebird, a robin, whatever bird you pick, sitting on the fence line, sitting on the mailbox, sitting on the telephone line, or sitting in the tree, and this bird blinked. Like when I said I think there was a fire hydrant right there. Yeah. Kind of. But okay. if there, let's, let's pretend. Okay? And you have to roll with me on this because it does work. It does help sometimes. If there was a bluebird sitting up here in the tree, and the bluebird sees you running down the road, and then the bluebird sees this car come up. Can you, can you imagine in your mind, looking at it from the bluebird's perspective, what is that bluebird seeing going on? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how you would like me to explain it to you, if you currently? Can. Okay. If, if, if that will help you, because it's, and I'll refer to that as the bluebird perspective. Okay. Okay. So do you understand what I'm saying? So if there was a bird out there, Sitting up there, fat, dumb, and happy, doing his thing. And the bird walks by and says, oh, here comes that pretty lady running down the street. And this bluebird just watching this whole thing and just sees it. Okay, we could use a camera. We could use whatever. But I'm going to use a bird because I, I think it fits. Okay. What is that bluebird seeing on that day? So roll us back from whatever point you feel is appropriate. Running to the mailboxes, cutting diagonally. I didn't cut diagonally until the car, because the car, the vehicle stopped, backed up, and then stopped again. And then I cut diagonally, but was at the grassy, I stopped at the grassy area, squatted, pulled out my hair, had my hands up. That is it. Does the bluebird see which side of the car you got in on? The, I, well, the car didn't move after it stopped, so I would, I would say that would be the passenger side. Okay. But you don't know. I Just don't a, remember. That's fine. I don't, and that, I don't even remember the back door opening. Okay. And when you're talking about back door, you're talking about side door or hatch? Or do you know? The, the passenger side of the vehicle, there was two doors. Okay. I don't remember the back door. The rear passenger door. Correct, opening. Do you see yourself getting in to that mm -hmm. part of the car? No. What's the next thing you remember? What's the bluebird see the where does the bluebird see which way the car goes? Or what's the car do next? No. It wasn't what I saw, it was what I felt. I was very nauseous. Okay. And cold. What's the next thing you remember seeing or hearing? Smelling laundry detergent on the pillowcase that was over my head. Case, pillowcase, hood, sheet. Do you know when something? That, do you know when that was put on your head? No. Do you remember where you were when you realized it was on your head? The floor of floor. the vehicle on my side. Is the vehicle moving or stationary? The vehicle is moving. Were you asked to put it on or did somebody put it on you? I woke up with it on. You're doing fine. This is good right here. Okay. Do you remember? Was there filtered light coming through your, the hood? Do you know what I mean by that? Shadows from the road? Okay. Yes. 
It was light. You have a sense of speed that you're traveling. It was windy. Okay. Windy roads make me nauseous. Okay. Any recollection of time and distance from before you stopped? Tell me more about that. I remember, wait, that, that's what, it, the first thing I remember is the nausea and waking up and being and trying to Trying to move my wrist hurt really badly. And my hips were very achy. I'm doing fine. Do you need anything? Do you remember getting out of the car? No. What's your next memory? Feeling very cold. Were you clothed? Yes. I had, the only original item I had was my underpants. Describe those, please. Uh, white Hanes underpants. What size? Small. I think that's for that brand's a 5S. Are they like uh, bikini cut, standard cut? Oh, You know what I mean? Uh, Just what, what style are they? White cotton, cotton white, white cotton, white cotton Hanes five. I think they want to say five S. I'm pretty sure we're in the same brand right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe next time you take a break, we'll double check see what they are. Yeah. <laughs> we'll hold off on that for now. <laughs> Can I ask some follow up questions? Can I maybe take a break from going forward? Yes. Yeah. When you went for the run. How many times did you play through the wedding song? Maybe two. Maybe. Okay. It's hard because that app interrupts everything. When that app, <laughs> when it that has app instructions. So when that, slow down and walk. When that, when that <laughs> app says slow down, does it shut your music off? Yes. So then you well, I don't want to say it shuts it off, it muffles it. It talks over it. Okay, but it doesn't doesn't do a hard stop. It just will uh, we'll overplay on it. And then once he's done talking... Then it goes back to the music. Then it goes back to the music. Yes, it doesn't pause it to talk. I think it just talks over it. Okay. Sorry, I'm just thinking of some things about your phone when we found it. That's all. Okay. So would you when I was looking up, I was, I was looking at my own Bluebird. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> Okay. Would you replay the Michael Bublé song for the majority of the run, or would you? It let... was on repeat. Yeah, okay. I didn't download music to my phone. I didn't really because right. I listened to Pandora <laughs> and Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one that's actually on my phone. So it's I didn't have like a wide variety of music for it to go through. And besides, I like listening to that song because it keeps me at a good pace for jogging. Because um, usually when I listen to other, then I start running faster, and then I wear myself out faster because I'm like. Yeah. You know, running to disco music, <laughs> jogging faster. Um, yeah. Prior to that day's run, okay, prior to the, that day was November 2nd. Mm -hmm. When did you run last before that? When was it? God, I don't like to run when it rains and it had been raining. Right. Would you say uh, three plus days a week? Any independent recollection at all? It wasn't the day before, right? I don't think so. It was raining the day before. Uh, yeah, it was partly, partly uh, crappy, as I say. I don't like to run in the rain, okay. so probably I would say. Doesn't the app have a date on it? Uh, I think the app keeps I, track I, of the day. That was. I don't know. So many anyway, browsers ago. I I'm going to say right I'm going to say the last sunny day. Okay. 
because it rained for a long time. Because I don't like to run in the rain. It's messy, muddy, and annoying. And that app was not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> was it a free app? <laughs> yeah, that, that app wasn't very helpful. We, we called the app builders. Oh, God. And all kinds of stuff. Yeah, no. Was, uh, I, yeah, I don't like to run in the rain, so I'm going to say the last time I ran was probably the last break in the rain. Okay. How often were you running? At what point did you start running again? Was it regular? Um, after my implants healed, okay. after my implants started healing, I started doing like at home yoga and exercises and things like that. And then was slowly progressing into, uh, running little bits here and there. Um, sometimes I would run around our yard. Um, like if the kids were napping, I'd pop the monitor in my hip and run around our yard, which I hated. Um, but it was really weather dependent because I'm a wuss and I don't like running in the rain. Keith, do you have some thoughts you want to add in for clarification? Um, so I went through, before my daughter put the wrong code in my phone, and erased my entire phone uh, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> we had a backup as of like the third. <laughs> you know, you back the phone actually, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, but I had all my notes before that. Um, October 18th, uh, she sent me a text saying, okay. the first time I ran yeah. since my yep. yeah. I just didn't know if there was something. Yeah, so uh, I was going to say she started out. The other thing is, um, you told me a story, you were running and a, a guy whistled at you. And to me, that was either a day or the day before you ran. So I would say you either ran the day before or the prior day. Okay. Because I remember that being fresh in my mind after yeah, all that this wolf happened. whistled at her at the mailboxes or something. Some like guy that. whistled yeah. at her and it was, and that was the day she went running and then we had steak. You made a little day. I remember that because he, he whistled and I went, you're not whistling yeah. to me, right? <laughs> and I don't think it was... It obviously wasn't Halloween night that that happened. So that tells me it was either the 1st or it was in the 30th. So it was within a couple of days that you ran. And that would, in my opinion, was only like the 4th, 5th time you ran. Well, and I talk to Keith every time I run because I complain about it. Me too. So, <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, every time I ran, I feel like I talk to Keith about it because it would be, what did you do today? Oh, my, ran went, my run went great. Or, God, my run sucked. Sucked today, and it, and my lungs were burning, and it, it was a mild thing. Right. So much longer than you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a couple of things I was writing down that she told me that. Uh, really, can I use the ladies' room? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Double check on your brand if you wouldn't mind while you're in there. Have your drawers. Oh yeah. Got it. In style and all that <laughs> stuff. Sorry. Um, Excuse me. You can ask her when she comes back. I just want to know if she started that song when she left the house and it was playing while she was running past the tree guys. Um, but she did say that she remembers the, the girl, the, the door, the front door was open and her, she said one foot was on the ground, not two. But she didn't, she didn't necessarily say it was on the ground because I was showing her different vehicles if it was like a step. Because I did show her like a Ford edition I believe it was mm -hmm. like a 1999 one and she was like oh that, that kind of looks similar mm. um, so you might want to ask her about her leaning out pointing and she said she really noticed a large back window like she just remembered it was long in the back my description of that is basically just a third row size SUV versus mm -hmm. a yeah. two row it's kind of the vehicle she was looking at and then also she definitely talks about a hump. That's all she talks about is a hump. And she's almost under the impression that there was, she was like laying down in there <laughs> trying to figure out. Of course she had something overhead, but two seats in the front and the, the driver and passenger seats. And then she feels there was no other seats in the entire thing, except for one. She's, this is where I get confused. Almost like the second row of seats, they took all of that out except for left one. And then the rest was just, I was like, was it metal or carpet? And she said it was carpet. Mm -hmm. But she said she felt she was on something. Like if she would move, it would move. So it's like a tarp, a blanket, a plastic sheet. And then she said she, she'll show you. She was kind of showing me how she was like tied down to it. Like she couldn't get up. So I was like, why are you waving your arms here? <laughs> she said you know, she couldn't. A lot of those vehicles, that front row always has that one seat that gets to the back mm -hmm. and then has that double bench. So yeah. Maybe, yeah. <clears throat> maybe that's what that is. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the same package that it's okay. in uh, their Hanes 5S. It doesn't say like the 
style or okay. anything, but they're yeah. sorry. Okay. That's all. Okay, so just hike that. Right. Regular women's underwear. No, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not um, I'm not getting too in depth, but obviously there's a method to my madness. I understand. That's why I grabbed them and brought oh. them back. Yeah. And she also and you'll ask um I believe she said the it was the older lady the younger lady driving older lady passenger. So while while you're Correct. gone, he was updating us on some prior uh, thoughts that you had in the last couple of days about some of your uh, memory. So he was just telling us, um, you know, something about uh, that you made an observation or you had a thought the other day uh, that the female was possibly leading out the vehicle, like she was getting out or something to that effect. Does yes, that, you the door that? was open and the body language was that she was getting out of the vehicle. But what I can't remember is, <laughs> were her feet on the ground or were they on, what's the thing that cars Step have? Side. Steps. Steps side or running board? Thank you. That's what I can't remember. I can't remember if her feet were actually on the ground or foot. Um, or was it on uh, Steps thing? Okay. And that you had an observation or a thought that the back window in the vehicle was large? Long. Long? Yes. Okay. Describe, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, it's one of those, duh, Brian. Uh, Describe no, that for me. Uh, not like uh, like a truck bed that's covered, like a SUV. Okay. But some SUVs are like shorter. Right. It was longer. And you're talking about from side to side. Yes. You're talking about the back or if it Not the a, passenger door window. The There's another window past window. the passenger door window. So it's a side window. Can we draw it? Uh, yes, please. I'm a terrible <laughs> artist, so That's please. fine. So is he. So yeah. between the both of you, you guys might get a halfway decent picture. <laughs> we're going to do, do a huge, right? It doesn't have to be. Stick figures. I don't need all that out. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going like an SUV, right? Those types of colors and shapes and stuff is really what's going to help them about the and outside. It's, it's hard because I want to I wanna say like black or dark blue, but I'm just not 100% sure, so it's hard for me to actually say a color. Absolutely. I just remember dark. Okay. I get it. And that's not, not, and I, because that's not, gonna, <laughs> that's not something I paid attention to. Like, Ish. it wasn't something I no, really. even <laughs> thought that I should be paying attention to, I guess. I yeah, it's definitely not to scale. Not a scale. <laughs> and of course, you're on the wrong side because that's the driver's okay, side. Okay, so there's there's a window. Here's the window, and then there's like a longer window. Okay. Gotcha. Behind this window. Okay. So it's what we call a C window for <clears throat> car crashes. Mm -hmm. Call it. And so, okay. for clarification, the vehicle is heading northbound. Uh, on the Oregon Trail when you first when you first saw it. Uh, coming. Okay, I, I I'm sorry. I'm mad with direction too. So if I'm so, so not helpful. We're, we're gonna be here. Yeah. So you're running down Sunrise towards Old Oregon Trail. Correct. Did the vehicle? So if you if your face if if you and I are looking out Sunrise to Old Oregon Trail, was the vehicle going this way? Yep. Okay. And then backed up. And then it backed up. So right now I'm pointing that's northbound and it backed up a little bit, then that's when you encounter Northbound's it. the side that's closest to Sunrise Drive, correct? Correct. Yes, Chevron. then that's it. <laughs> that's the one. We're going to Chevron. Yeah, they were going the to Chevron. Side. They were heading towards Chevron. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. I don't like you. <laughs> and Pete's like, was it a Ford? Was it? I'm like, I don't know brands. We're going to Chevron. <laughs> it had wheels on it, okay? <laughs> so, do you... I'll ask a couple questions. It's okay. It's okay. Do you recall if you went up towards Chevron, or did, did you notice if they turned around and went back the other way that they came? I don't remember. Okay. That's what I what is very frustrating. Yes, and that to would me. be very frustrating. Um, I, I get that. That's it's what the I'm, little thing. Yeah, no, I'm very frustrated because if you're laying down in the vehicle, you would feel a U-turn, a acceleration, mm -hmm. a braking, and I just can't, I can't find that. It's just not there yet. It's so let me, I'll put it in perspective. 
So I had an incident not too long ago. And when I talked about something, I said the vehicle was facing this way. And this is where I was, and this is what I did, and this is da da. And I went down this whole list. And then they showed me a photograph of the vehicle that I was describing. It was facing the other way. But at the time of the incident, at the time where I was and what was going on, it imprinted in my mind, no, that fucking car was facing that way. When they showed me a picture and then they showed me video of it, that car was facing, and I felt stupid. I felt they're not going to believe me now. That's how I felt. I'm thinking, I, I just lied. But at that time, at that moment, given the circumstances I was in, you, I, I, I thought well, they had to move it. You guys moved the car. No, Brian, this is 10 minutes after the fact. And it, it screwed me for about two days because I'm thinking, my God, I just told everybody my version of the events and I was wrong about it. A key piece because I said no I was right here in front of the truck and da 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 and, that, and this is all what happened come to find out it was the truck had turned around yeah it's, it's just because our minds and, and, it frustrates, and it frustrates me to this day that from where I come from and where my background it's like how did I screw that up I didn't screw it up this did this this part of me says for whatever reason we're looking this way so when I say I understand your frustration and I get that I get it. I'm sharing that with you. And I don't know if I've ever shared that. I don't think I've shared that with Kyle. But I, I get it. That's frustrating shit. Because you you know it's there. You you may believe or see or smelt or felt. And your mind's saying something else. So I get that. And that's frustrating as shit. Mm -hmm. So. Those brain games? Uh-huh. Sure, those brain games. <laughs> so. It's the same thing. Keith was talking about that you had some observations about the back of the vehicle being slippery and that maybe there was no, or wasn't some um, seats. What, no, it's, that. Um, uh, the position I was in was very awkward and that's why my hips were achy okay. um, because laying on my side for a long period of time, um, it makes it achy after okay. I've had two kids. Um, it's that it's it's that fatigue because we've mm -hmm. taken long car rides before, um, you know. It's that long, it's that sitting, that achy feeling. But there was because um, I could see light, I could see light, I could see shadows. As in, we were driving past like a tree, you know, when a tree, mm -hmm. even if you have your eyes shut, you drive past a tree and you see the mm -hmm. light. I could see that. I could smell. Um, the laundry detergent. I, if I smelled it, I could probably even tell you the smell of the laundry detergent still. Uh, that will be a future trigger. Okay, yeah. Uh, and there was, I know I was attached to a bar or some piece of metal because it was cold. <clears throat> I was on, and there was something underneath me but where my knee was, was on carpet because it was itchy. And there was a hump. I was hump. facing, I could hear them. I could hear them in the front seat and my back was to them and I was facing the rear. The hump is, I could feel the edge of it I could lift my head a little bit and it's, it's, this is hard to describe. So if, if this is close in front of me, I can feel that. I can feel that that's close. Mm -hmm. So if I lift my head, I can, I know that there's, there's nothing here. Mm -hmm. My head's down. There's something here. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense yes. to you? Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like there was a lip or a Yes, in like a level you. up, yes, in front of me. There wasn't a lot of space between where I was, but there was a, and that's what it, I could tell where my knee was, and I could tell when I would lift my head a little ways. But I was very scrunched up. Could you feel what your back was up against? Mm, no. 
I don't think my back was up against anything. Was your chest up against anything? No. So you, so you were confined, so you weren't like right behind the front passenger window, so like you were, your back would be against the driver and passenger seat and your chest would be at like that will well, like where our feet go. You think you're beyond the No, back. I was on like a carpeted, it was like the carpeted area. But I feel like it would have been where a seat should be. Okay. Like an area where a seat should be. But not directly behind the driver and the passenger. No. Okay. There was space between, in between. But I, okay. This is better. It's, this is difficult to explain because, okay. okay. So here's... Two um, people are drawing on one page. Hang on. I'm wondering if it's like an elevated rear... It's a three seat vehicle, has a little elevation. For the so rear seat here's platform. Here's where the front seats are. Okay. Front seats are here. Um, I think there was a seat here. I can't be certain, but I think there was a seat here. And it's just a uh, driver? Driver, okay. yes. Here's the seat. We'll say that's the steering wheel. Okay. Uh, there was like stuff, like bars, like. Uh, not bars, metal pieces. Like there should be a seat here, I feel like. I was here, so there was space. And there's a hump here. This is that hump. And where, what's I I can't Sorry, remember if there was a seat there or not. But I like here, mm -hmm. I could, I could feel it on my skin. Like I could feel the pressure of there being like some kind of metal. You know, that's the old, like my, grew up, my grandparents had an older, older big SUV. Um, and those were all metal, like where it latches. So like my, my Jeep, all that ratches down into a metal piece, like when it folds up and down. So maybe it's one of those. Um, yeah, which side is your head on of the vehicle, if you remember? This side. Okay. So as you were going, um, I mean, smiling face. Brown face, smiling face. Smile. Smiling face. Um, as you're driving and the light's hitting, the sun's coming through, is that on your face or on your, um, like on your back, like your um, legs area? What, if you remember, what side is the sun on? I have no idea. Uh, I don't know because I don't really think I saw like like as in one side was brighter than the other. I think I just saw shadows. I I have no idea. Um, for shadows, be there's got to be blocking the sun. So is that like the same? So do you would you remember like if your is is your left ear down or is your right ear down? Right My right. Um, and your face was covered, obviously. Do you remember what, um, like what side the shadows are on? Mm -hmm. If they're towards like maybe like the top of your head as opposed to your chin, if you're looking down or up. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We're not worried about it. <laughs> That's not, it's not a negative. It is. Um, it's frustrating for me to not have answers for you guys too. I'm trying, but and these are the little things we're trying to help bring them up if they're there. And this, like a lot of our questions, might come to you at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Okay. If that happens. Write them down. Call me. Call okay. me at that time. I don't care. Okay. Um, And when you said it was hard to move your head, was it hard because there was an object on it, or? Um, I didn't like, feel well. Okay. Like I didn't. I felt like a nauseous, dizzy, yucky. I don't know. Yeah. How? Good. And what do you think the time frame from on that road was? It primarily you said it was curvy or kind of getting like. I'm assuming kind of a car sick nausea besides the stress. Yes. Um, was that for long times 
or was it curvy for times, long straights for times, if you remember? I feel like the times I was awake, it was curvier than straight. There was more curves than straight. I don't remember any stops. That's what I'm trying to remember. Was there a stop? Did I turn? Or was it just the curves? Or was there a stop and a turn? Right or left? It was turn. It was curves, like a windy road, not a stop and a turn. Um, would they have to break on the turns? Or did it seem pretty smooth? Some of them, I don't want to say all of them, some of them it seemed like there was break and acceleration, but not all of them. Um, how many times do you think you fell asleep? Like on that first. I don't know. And that's okay. Um, when you got to the first stop that you remember, was it still, what was, was it still right outside? Was it? I don't remember. I don't even remember getting out of the vehicle. The next thing I remember is I was in a room. Let's pause there. You have stuff on. The last time that I remember waking up, it was still light. It was still bright. Like it didn't seem like it was dark. The last time I woke up in the car, um, it was bright, but, okay, well, I'm trying to think like where my muscles sore, was my ear sore, because when I lay on my ear for a long time, it hurts, and I could wake up and, was, I just, I can't remember any of that. How long does it take for you to get achy hips when you lay on your side? Does that question make sense? Yes. Uh, Trying to think of the last show that I watched <laughs> during the show, at what point of the show or the movie. Because I'm a roller. Say... My wife refers it to my alligator roll. When my hips start hurting, uh -huh. I do basically like an alligator roll. Mm -hmm. And I do a complete somersault in bed and flip to my other hip because I get my yeah. hips. I have a hip issue. And so when I lay on my right side. Labor. No, I no, <laughs> have Well, I mean, yeah. what, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> no, for me, I have hip issues from labor. Um, um, when I lay on my right side for about 30 minutes, um, it starts, it aches and annoys and I have to, I have to adjust. Yeah, I want to so. say let's, let's like a good like 40, I okay. want to say like it's like one show of Blacklist gotcha. and then I have to move. Um, yeah, so it's probably one TV show. So I'm going to say like 40 minutes, okay. less than a, a little less than an hour. Unless I'm on my bed and it's nice and fluffy and comfortable. Right. And pillows, but, pillows between the knees. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember any music? As you were driving, yes, mariachi music. Hmm. Was, um, there, was it a station or a Pandora? Like as in a radio station? Yeah. I yeah. want to say it was probably a radio station. I'm, I can't be sh sure, but did I hear any Pandora uh, yeah. commercials? Yeah. No. Um, did you hear any normal commercials? So like um, if we're listening to a radio? No, I didn't hear commercials. I didn't, I didn't really hear, and I, I don't think I ever heard a complete song from start to finish either. Um, I listened for that a lot in the house too. Like, was this a, was this a radio? Was it, or was it Pandora or, um, since, since we've touched it twice, mentioned the house twice or location where you remember. Can we talk about that? Start with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell us 
what would you like the description of the room? Would you like sure. the sounds that I heard? Would you like what I think was there? What yes. would you like? What was the first thing you remember? Uh, the first thing I remember uh, was the, the zip ties on my hands. And then the clothing that was very big. It was baggy clothing. It was sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And I did not have socks and I was very cold. And there was zip ties on my hands and I didn't feel good. I couldn't stand up. I was very dizzy. When you first had this in the sweatshirt stuff, is that the same stuff that you were found in the other day? No. How so? Um, because they would change me. Okay. Um, because the there was a, a drawstring on the sweatpants. There was a drawstring on the sweatpants, and the other one didn't have a drawstring. How many times do you think you were changed? Or had change of clothes? Obviously at least twice, so it's her. Yeah, I think maybe one more time. <clears throat> Did it seem like the clothes were new? The, or old? wait a minute. Okay. The sweatshirt, the top, the top was changed more because I was trying to, I was trying to manipulate her my skin was really, my skin was like on fire. It was really itchy everywhere. And I, I started this rash mm -hmm. um, that's up in here. Mm -hmm. This, it was starting to like swell, mm -hmm. starting to swell so bad that it was like putting pressure on my arms. So I was trying to um, manipulate them. I need some kind of medicine, like look at my skin. You need to wash me. You need to give me medicine. You need to get me something. Um, and I was using that and it was so itchy. Um, so they would argue about washing my clothes. And I was able to take two, I want to say two showers. Um, they weren't really, if you want to call them a shower, it was get in, rinse water down your back and get out. Um, but she let me wash my underpants in the shower. Were you able to see at that time or were you? You still had a bag of No, I could see. Okay. And that was when I was uh, trying, you know, it was always look down. Um, don't look at us, look down. Um, I was never allowed to look up. Um, the first day, the first day with the zip ties, getting out of them, because they were behind, they were behind my back. So I pulled them, I did one of these moves. And that's what this scar right there is from, is the very beginning when I got them off. And yeah. I bit them because I couldn't, because Keith and I have even tried this move before, the whole, you know, like power through it and bust it. Mm -hmm. And I tried that and was unsuccessful. <laughs> and, and it cut right here. And I was like, I remember doing this with Keith. How the F do I get these off? And I tried that several times and I tried the power bust it down and that that's where it cut in right there and then I was like I can't bust through them so then I just chewed it off and I cut my lip right here and then I busted them um and then it was like I tried the door I could tell that the door had a deadbolt at the top so I couldn't open the door and then they came in and that's all I remember from that experience um no there's something else there's something else before I tried the door. There was something else before I tried the door. The windows? No, I don't... No, there's something else there. There's something else after the zip ties that happened. After I broke the zip ties. I'm trying to think if it maybe there was something around my feet or something, but there's something else.
Yeah. We can come back to it. Um, there was, okay, there was boards on the windows. There was boards on the windows and I yanked that fucker out of the wall super quick and that's what got her in the room was that noise. I was standing on the bed to get to the window. I was standing on the bed to get to the window. The yanking it out was what made the noise, not the zip ties, not anything. It was the yanking the board, the first board. There was two boards. It didn't go all the way across the window. It was, it was window board, I'm doing a terrible drawing, board. There was no space in between, sorry. But window, board, board, um, bed, this one. Broke my nail, ripped it off. She came in and then it was lights out. What do you mean it was lights out? I, I can't remember if it was, if I was hit with something, if I was stuck with something, if it, and that's what I was asking too. If I was tased, wouldn't I remember? Or would there be a scar? Would there be a mark? Would there be a mark? Uh, it just depends if the probes made skin contact. Or if it was a handheld, there'd be. But it wouldn't register you like cognitively Here. helped. It's, it's skeletal muscles. So it's, it's only muscle, so it wouldn't be like, like you see on TV all the time where you get tased and they just lay on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but tasers only affect muscles. So have you ever touched a horse fence? The horse wire. I don't think so. Hot wire. I don't think so. It's, it's a unique experience. Okay. <laughs> um, but you ever, you ever been shocked before in general? I don't think so. Okay. So like when the taser yeah. comes through, like if, if I get a taser here and here and here, it'll only affect my muscle. The electricity goes from this probe to this probe and it attaches all the muscles because it's, it's water. Um, so the muscle will tighten up and that's where that clack, clack, clack. So it's only that quad. Okay. If I put it from here to here, You'll do both quads and my abdomen as the electricity goes from this leg up and around to that so leg. Chances are it probably wouldn't have knocked me out. No, not cognitively. Any, right. Unless it was a if it was like a handheld, like a drive stun, it would just it would shock you and make you like out. It wouldn't but my out. eyes would still be open. But, yeah. But your brain could also just say, I don't want to remember. So you still have that element to it. So <clears throat> describe the flooring to me. Carpet. Color. Thickness. Um, different than this carpet. It wasn't like 1970s shag carpet, was it? No, <laughs> it was like a cheap, I don't want to, I, it's, I don't know if it was like brown, maybe orange. Like an orangey brownish, but it was like cheap. It wasn't, it was like cheapy. Was, uh, was it like uh, It was secured? a different, it was a different carpet in the closet also. It, the carpet in the closet texture was different than the outside room carpet. Like it, like they replaced the carpet and then this didn't replace the hmm. closet carpet. How about the bathroom? What's that look like? I tried to hit her with something in the bathroom, and then the next time I went in the bathroom, everything was gone. The mirror was gone, the towel rack was gone, everything was gone. But it just was a standard, oh, there was a crack in the tile. It was a light colored tile that was speckled. There was a crack in the tile. It was always hands on the wall. It was a really high pressured shower with just your standard cheapy shower head. I was never allowed to touch the nozzle or, and it, in the beginning, that very first shower that I had hurt really bad because the burn was fresh and the water was running over it and there was other open wounds and it just, Oh, and she doused me. I want to say it was like rubbing alcohol, maybe, because it was that smell and that burning. I don't think it was peroxide. I think it was rubbing alcohol. 
but it was like a <laughs> doused. Can you, can we, could you uh, discern or was it like a trailer bathroom manufactured? That's you know okay. I mean? So that's where I feel like my parent. My parents have a. Uh, a I think it's called a prefabricated house in Shingletown. Okay. And I feel like that's what it sounded like. And there was um, wood paneling. Like I could have busted right through the wood paneling. It was very thin and the walls were thin. Um, If I ha like, if I hadn't have been on the cable and the chain, I could have just busted right through the wall. You and mean? you could hear, like, if you put your head to the wall, because I did that often, you could hear very easily. And the insulation, it was freezing all the time. It was cold all the time. And there was a fireplace. I could smell the fireplace, and I could hear that creaky when you move the handle to open the fireplace. It, it was that creaky, it sounded exactly like the fireplace it's I like had. It's like a wood stove. Wood yeah, it sounded exactly, like literally exactly like the wood burning stove I had as a kid in our old Main Street house in Chasta Lake City. Um, I could even smell when she put different kind of wood in the fireplace. Any particular wood smells you recall? I couldn't tell you the kind of wood. I could just, just tell you. I could notice smells? a difference. Yes, I could notice a difference. What's what's the comment about when you were on the cable? What do you mean? A minute ago, you said when I was on the cable, were you tethered to a cable? Uh, there was a chain around my waist. Okay. Um. So the chain had. I'm sure. Okay. Sorry. The <laughs> chain. The chain. So, here's a, Let's draw the, a pretty the, stick figure. Let's draw the whole room. You want to do that? Sure. We'll lay up the whole room. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think where to start with the direction. So, here's the door. Mm -hmm. Here's the closet. The closet had two doors. Here's the, the hinge here. Here's the hinge here. They shut inward. Here's the doorknob here. There was like some kind of holders because they would lock it with some kind of thing to keep it shut. Uh, when I was, when they were, I think, I want to say when they were maybe uh, changing the bedding or changing, but more often than not, or if they, or if they maybe had to go outside to get something, I was in here because I could sometimes hear a door. They would put me in here. And then there was, I, I'm bad with dimensions. So let's just say here's the closet and here's, we're going up this direction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Towards the ceiling. There was a shelf. And, okay, so I could, the shelf was maybe, I could touch it, I had this much leverage, so I could touch it, so it was probably, the shelf was maybe this tall. Because I could grab it, but I couldn't push it up. If I could push it up, if I was tall enough to push it out up, I would have been able to get out but I wasn't tall enough to push it all the way up. So the shelf, I could grab like the ledge, you know, if I was on my tip, tip, tip toes, I could grip the ledge. And then there was this pull, this stupid pull that was attached here, came down like all the way up. Fucking pull is the only reason why I was there. The cable was here and it made a turn. I'm sorry for swaying. And then the cable, I could reach all the way to the bed, couldn't reach the door, couldn't reach the window, could reach the bed. There was a 
um, at all times there was a bucket in the um, closet. That's what I used to go to the bathroom in. Um, was the room rectangle or square? Ish. I want to say rectangle. I, like the walls weren't, like some walls were smaller than others. I would say rectangle. So where? Um, Door. Do you know if Closet. It swung, which did it swing towards the rest of the room or towards the this other wall? This direction. Okay. Windows. Two or one? You mean, was there more than just this one? This was the only window. Yeah. Was it big or small? I don't know. I don't know what's big and what's small as in terms of windows, sorry. Um, in, for the room, did it look like it was, was it the whole length of the room? Oh, no. Okay. Um, so where, sorry. where's the window you tried to break out of? Okay. So <coughs> this is boarded. Correct. Where, um, where's the bed in relation to the door? Um, you want to draw, which way does it go? Um, it was a smaller mattress. Okay. I'm gonna say maybe like a twin or maybe, I think, I think, I would say a twin, it was small. Okay, where's the closet in relation to the bed? And you said the doors went this way? They opened out? Yes. Okay. Um, we'll hand over this side. Yes. Where? It latched onto something. Like, not only did they shut, but there was like a, like, when you shut it, it would make a noise. Like a standard or something like, something that they put in? So, like, if you have, like, an old, if we went to, like, an older house and we shut the, um, Sometimes there's a little knob that comes inside it and it like holds on to it. It just sits, does it open all the way? Um, come to the door with me. It wasn't like, like this. Is this what you're talking about? No, um, some of them pop into each other. So there's two, they're on um, springs. No, it popped into something that was on that shelf. Okay. Does that make more sense? Yes. Sorry. So it comes up and it would hit it and then it would hold it. So then to open it, you'd have to release a piece-ish. Correct. Correct. Okay. So from here, what was right on the inside of this door? Nothing. Okay. Uh, was there... Light switch. Sorry, light switch. Was there any, like, here's the bed, was there any type of, like, dresser or anything, any type of normal bedroom furniture in this room? Mm. There was a dresser but after I ripped this up, when I woke up, it was no longer there. Where was the dress the first day you were there? Here. Was it a tall, like a man's dresser, or like a short, long, uh, like a woman's dresser? Uh, two dark colored, two drawers. Okay, so like more like nightstands. Yeah, more okay. like that, I would say. One, not two, just yeah. one. Nothing in it. It's first thing I did was open the drawers. Um, was the mattress directly on the floor? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember anything in this area? No. Uh, anything in this area? Is mom here? Yeah. <clears throat> um, anything in this corner that you remember? <clears throat> So oh, uh, no, sometimes the trash can was there every once in a while, but no, no, no. I want to. I was going to say the trash can was in that corner, but it was this corner, not that corner. Was that trash can for you, or what was the trash can for? Yes, and at one point, too, I tried, a, uh, I was trying, because they were always mad about it, and I tried to say, you know, if you line it, 
with the bag and put kitty litter in it, it'll probably make your job a little easier trying to, I, cause I tried everything with them. I tried any tactic that I could and they did that. They, they put kitty litter in it afterwards. So. Was this trash can for you to go to the bathroom in? Yes. Okay. So this wasn't like a normal, like trash can this was like for your no it was small it was like a small plastic like it was just your ordinary small plastic waste basket like it was it, like it was like a bathroom waste basket okay. and it was round it wasn't square it was round and it was small and it was really hard to squat on because it wasn't very tall okay. um, so when you're describing you're describing this <laughs> so this cable was the cable affixed to the wall and like the cable was loose? The cable was affixed to a pole that went up into the ceiling. Okay. And that's Bless you. about middle of the... Dead center. Dead center. So we have this pole that was anchored to the roof somewhere. Correct. What was on the pole? Uh, the shelves that I couldn't get out. They were like super bolted in. Like... Like they'd added more stuff to it okay. to not to not get them because I the first day when I broke my fingernails it was trying to get the screws like trying to undo the screws and that there. was like on these sides and yes and trying to get to where the drywall was because there was drywall but um, but I couldn't and trying to move that pole but I couldn't move the pole the pole too it wasn't just like a a pole it was like it. Um, Almost, it's not quite rebar. It it was okay. So think of if you had a screw that was big and long, and you tried to grab it, it would like cut your fingers almost. Um, is that making any sense? Mm -hmm. Like, like a lag it, bolt? I don't know what that is. So it's a big screw. <laughs> yeah, you just you described <laughs> a lag bolt. It's a large wood screw that kind of similar to like rebar, but it's for. Yeah, it, it have, wasn't very thick. No. It wasn't like I could grab it with both hands. It wasn't thick enough that I had to do this. Right. It was. But you put it in your hands. Yes, like, but I couldn't grab it. Like that's that. Those were some of the hand? first injuries that I had. Was trying to rip the stupid thing out, and I made my hands hurt a lot. That there was just it was it wouldn't give. It wouldn't give at all. So like thickness of the pin, a little thicker, a little less. Thicker. thicker. Like a lot or a little. Like so, are we getting more to like? Like the thickness of the um, um, swim between. Yeah, if you could give me something that I could grab, it would be easier for me. But are you able to put your hands all the way around? Straws. <coughs> like thumb. Yep. Thumb, yes. Thumb to finger. Okay. Yes. There's a big thing of straws right there. You want to try to grab? Nah, it's, she can she can go finger fingertip to tip, thumb yes. tip to fingertip. So it's okay. three quarter yes. inch yep. wide. There you go. Just those. <laughs> Um, yeah, Some, somewhere around there. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. Yes. So if we're... <coughs> yeah. Got to say <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Do so you know that game that you had me make? Or did Tyler smash it that thing and it you know, flips the deal up? For Pumpkin flipper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that big piece of bar that I had? Just a screw and I had the bolts that screwed into it? And it was mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. something like that. It's got the big grooves in it. It would hurt. Mm -hmm. And was it screwed up? Did it look like it was screwed up into the wall? I don't know. Did it look like they, I don't know. So it wasn't a smooth surface. Yeah. Because, I mean, that would be easy for us to buy a piece, bolt that in, and this thing would screw up into it. It was not smooth. Yeah. I have it was like not grabbing here, a big, a piece it was like grabbing a big screw, okay. is what it felt like. That makes sense. So now I have. So now we're looking directly into the closet, and there was nothing in the closet, right? Other than the bucket. The bucket. What side of the? It, I moved it around. So. Okay. We'll just put that here. Yeah. It was never. It never seemed like it was set in the same place. So if this was the um, the thing that went into the so the the pipe or the whatever we're what are you going to call. I don't know the bar. The bar. The Where. Pole. Far's in the middle. Where is it in relation to the um, the shelf? In the center of the shelf. Does it go below the shelf or above the shelf? Below the shelf. How far? Mm. 
Uh, I hit my head on it a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that far. So a foot down from here. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Is, I'm really bad at like okay. foot, inch, five yeah. miles, two yard. I'm really bad at I'm that. An, I'm so. an ish guy. I like ish. Yeah. Okay. We're we're about an ish down from here, about a foot. <laughs> So from here, is there anything that goes um, on the base of this, or is it just hanging there? Yes, what there was washers and uh, what are those bolts, okay. which I got out. Okay. Which I got off. So this whole thing goes up into the roof. Correct. Okay. So the ceiling. Thing. Correct. Off to another one. Does it go through the shelf? Yes. Okay. So if this is the shelf. That's, if I could have gotten the shelf off, I could have gotten out because I could have pulled the cable just straight off of it. It was the shelf that I couldn't get off. Okay, so that's why I was- And I couldn't break through sense. the shelf either. I couldn't break through the shelf and I couldn't get the shelf off because that was in the middle of the shelf. If I could have just, so, see the hole? Mm -hmm. yep. Here's the shelf. Mm -hmm. If I could have just removed the shelf and I could have just went, see you later. So with, what was, do you know what like, what you were affixed to? Was it like a tether? Was it like a rope? A metal cable. Um, about how thick, do you know? It was thin. It was, and the end, I was working on the end and I got the end frayed. So it was not very thick, but I mean, I, I even tried chewing on it at one point. I popped a screw out of the electrical socket and tried scraping with a screw at one point. I mean, there was... Have you ever hung a picture, like a picture wire, like something like that? Uh, thicker. Okay. Thicker. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say it's probably like Buddy's dog leash thing. Yeah, we just had that metal wire. Yes. Yeah. How thick was that? Eighth inch, quarter inch, three eighths. Right, eighth inch. Ish. Uh -huh. Ish. Uh, so did this? Sorry. Did this tether go? Yes. Similar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Listen. So did the pipe, so this pipe just went straight up and it ended at the yeah. bottom? Yes. How was, um, so the cable that you were attached to, that was loose. So if you, like, if you, mm. like, if you had, like, if it, let's say, um, you pull I had pipe, slack. Slack, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I could get to, I could, okay, so I could get to the bed. So it reached the bed. Okay. I could obviously get to the closet. Yep. And I could touch the light with my toe. I could stretch my toe up, look the light, which never went on, unfortunately. But, and Keith and I were talking about that as well, but it went on when they turned it on. So that leads me to believe that they had to have flipped a breaker or something okay. that it would work for switch. them, but it wouldn't work for me. I'm sorry, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Could be on a three-way switch. Oh. Yeah, you know, I like don't in know the hallway. Sorry. Basically, you, like if you have this switch here and you have a switch over that wall, you can link them. So if you turn it on, it turns it off, turns it on, turns it off. Oh, so you have access. Yeah. So it never worked for me. So you could have had access to the outside. Sorry, but okay. Um, so this accurately depicts the bedroom ish? Yes. Okay. Um, you said there was no light. That came in through the board? There was the most minuscule, tiny sliver of light, but I mean, not even that it would cast light onto the floor. I don't, I feel like I was on a side where the sun wasn't, because I feel like if the sun would have been on that crack, then there would be, you know, light coming through. I don't feel like that ever happened. Like no. I never saw light directly coming through. I could see like, you know, it was getting lighter, it was getting darker shades, but I never actually never any direct saw. light coming through? Thank you, yes, no. So more like a north facing window? I have no idea. Like on that, I don't know what's on this side of this house, but you know, the, the window facing. Like as in it wasn't the, facing the sun. Not facing east, west, because if it was facing south at this time of year, you're gonna get direct light. And if it's facing I think so. towards the sunrise, you're gonna get 
there's a light. And if it's facing towards the sunset, you're getting a light. So if it's a north facing window, it's going to you be, wouldn't get direct light it's either. It's going to be yeah. ambient light. That's what I feel. Like. <clears throat> yes. Um, are you okay? Yes. Do you remember when? When were you first attached to? When you first remember? When you mean like how many? hours, days, oh, that. Was that yeah. something immediate that, that occurred? Or no, that... that didn't happen until I tried to get out. Okay. Uh, like, I don't know, like why, you think I'm just gonna sit there? I mean, <laughs> that didn't make any sense to me. Like all I had was zip ties, really? And you think I'm not gonna get out of a bolted door and a boarded window? Um, so obviously, so the restraints progressed over time, correct? Yes. So the very first time you, you alluded to earlier, you didn't really say it. It looked like you had the zip ties were around both wrists. Correct. So one zip tie around both wrists, or was it? One. This? Okay, so one one zip tie, that was your very first restraint. Correct. Um, I hadn't had that, the chain was not on me yet. Was that bar there? Was the bar there? When, was, this already, was this already in the room? That you remember? I don't know. I don't think the closet doors were even open. Did I open the closet doors? I don't remember. I don't remember seeing it. I mean, I. I'm sure it was there. It didn't. It didn't seem like it was freshly put in. Okay. Um, but I. The day that I tried to break out of the window, I mean, I that wasn't something that I was really focused on, so I couldn't say. I don't know. Did you give it, how much time do you think you gave it from the very first time you remember being in the room to your very first escape attempt? I feel like, I feel like they, I don't think they expected me to wake up so quickly. Because when, when I was breaking through the zip ties, when I first woke up, them like doing things I could hear like movement I could hear I couldn't hear talking but I could hear like movement I could hear things I could hear um yeah so I feel like I feel like because it was very hard to stand up and it was very hard to move around um I felt like heavy almost like, I don't know how to describe that. Like, almost like it was hard to stand up. It's hard to describe that feeling. So once you gained your strength, did you try to your escape at that point? Or did you... What do you mean? So you when, I, you felt uh, when I had the zip ties on me? Yeah. Or were you... I you never had, I head? never felt like I had strength. I was just trying to push through it. I, I was very fumbly trying to get the window out. I was very fumbly, but... But you tried, you remember coming to, it's not like you gave it hours or minutes or did you get it? Hmm? Yes. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Show how, because you came back and tighten it with a padlock onto the cable. And I remember you drew me like a loop. Yep, I can do that for you. Yeah. If you would like to wait till the camera is rolling, that's yeah. fine. I can start drawing it for you now. And then you also said you pushed that screw that you took out of that outlet, so there's going to be an outlet with a screw missing because you said you yep. pushed it into something like drywall and it got stuck or something. Yeah. You pushed it somewhere. Yeah. I was trying to like use it like a little I was like, what would my husband do? My, head would, my husband would use any tool he could possibly you find. Yeah. Uh, can I use the ladies' room since yes, you're you messing with the camera? <laughs> No, no, we all heard it shut off. We all heard it shut off. Yeah. So I have to ask, how many cats are here? There's uh, two in here, and then uh, some neighborhood ones just kind of walk oh. around out there. Are you losing? No, I like cats. Oh. I just saw like, three or four different ones. Oh, there's, there's only so many three total, but I've seen some other ones come up here. Sometimes there'll be like a skunk or something, <laughs> usually at night out there. It's a beautiful property. See yeah. the pool toys you guys get in the river? Is there a pool somewhere? There's a big old pool right there, and then my kids go in the spa thing out there. You know what I'm Yeah, I'm just, uh, she hasn't been eating a lot. I was 
So at some point, what we were just talking offline about, um, at some point you were able to take out the screw to the light switch. This, and you, not light switch, uh, outlet. So you're able to take the screw out. Yep. Where did you put the screw? What area did you shove it in? I had the screw for a long time. I tried to, I tried to pick the lock on the lock on the on the chain. I tried to use it as a saw <laughs> um, up in this area. So right, because I was trying to like unscrew things because everything had like bolts and screws and everything. And I, um, um, yeah, I want to say somewhere near the closet where the drywall was. Because I could poke through the drywall, but what's the point of poking, busting, because I can punch through drywall. But what's the point of busting through drywall if you can't get a cable off of you? So it was, boop, there's the screws in the wall now. I could punch through the wall to get the screw back, but then it's going to get colder. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. So it was, I was trying to, like, you know, like move things around, and then I did this, and it went, went through, and it went, there must be a screw. Um, yes, so it's somewhere in the wall in here, in this area. High or low? Um, near where the... Uh, okay, so we had um, the... Uh, here where the uh, where they were reinforced. And that, that was difficult too because it was like, okay, well, oh, I, the cable can reach the wall. I can bust through the wall. I can bust through the door. I can bust all this stuff. But if I can't get this off of my waist, what? it's not going to matter. So we're thinking like right here for the screw ish below this? Yes. So in here somewhere? No, up, 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 up. Okay, up. okay so here's like up here. Up where like the, the shelving had like extra attachments and stuff. So this is the shelf? The right bottom. Here. Okay, so if this is the bottom of the shelf with the attachments that were reinforcing it, okay. it would be like there in the wall area. Can we go back to the shower? Sure. Um, the very first time you showered, do you remember what type of, um, like, shampoos Did and stuff Did you get your like camera that? figured out, or are we just no, kind we'll of... Okay. I'm sorry. What kind of shampoos and stuff was... There was remember? never shampoo. It was just, like... Um, was there a shower curtain? No. Um, there was a bar where the shower curtain should be. Okay. So, like, the normal standard like, should be hanging, but it just wasn't there? Yes, but it, okay, so it was like the, like the very inexpensive ones that have like the knob where you can twist it and it's just small and cylindrical and you can twist it and the water comes out harder or slower. Mm -hmm. Oh, the old school ones. Yeah. Something like that. It was a bottle. So there was a, she would throw the bottle at me. There was a bottle that I could squeeze like, uh, body wash. Thank you. Sorry. I don't know why I could. And that was all I got, was that. Okay. Um. It was really short. Like, I barely would wash the soap away. Is there any um, any other details about the house or the room? Um, That's room? the only part of the house that I saw was the bedroom and the bathroom. Okay. Um. All right. Um. We want to start getting into some of the little harder stuff again. Are you alright with that? Yes. Um, so we learned the very first day we talked to you that the the very first time you attempted to escape was probably one of the worst based on everything you've told us so far. Um, can you tell us how or what happened then? Uh, in terms of what they did or what they, what do you mean? What happened to you the, um, the first time you tried to escape? Um, Things you remember. I don't, you don't have to get every detail, just whatever you, whatever you remember. I don't remember 
remember. I mean, I remember, I remember ripping the board off. I remember the door opening and then I don't, I remember waking up in a lot of pain on my back, on my side, on right here and here. So back of your head. Here and back here, right my here. neck was sore. Like I woke up and did that. And I, I know there's more. I just can't. And that's okay. Um, my first understanding was that that was when you got um, burnt. Um, is that wrong? No, that's after that. Okay. Anytime. Um, so you were. When I would look up at her, she would hurt me. So anytime I wasn't on all fours with my head down, when she opened the door, I had to drop to the floor with everything on the floor and look down. And how are you told that? What point were you told? Were you told that or was that just something you learned through violence? Uh, she said it. It was, don't look at me. That was often, don't look at me. I can hear her accent still. Don't look at me. I feel like I did that. Uh, like she never said, get on all fours. Like there was never a get on all fours. I feel like, but she did say, don't look at me. There wasn't a specific command. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. There wasn't, excuse me, sorry. There wasn't a specific command for that. Um, so how do you know the burn was results or for a punishment for that very first one? Why, why do you think that? I'm sorry, what was your question? I'm so sorry. when you were burnt, you said it, it was punishment for that first attempt. Why do you think that? No. That was something completely different. The burns, I don't... The burns were not punishment for the window. The other, the other hurting was for punishment for the window. The burns didn't come until a little later. Um, this one on my arm um, was from making noise. It wasn't from whipping, ripping the window off because I feel like ripping the window off, there was just so much going on. These were for making noise. So the, the burn on your left forearm, um... Do you remember how they how that happened, um, or what it was used? I want to say. I want to say it was a piece of metal. I, they just they weren't in the room often. I'm trying to remember because she touched me several times. It wasn't just once. It was this one that she held on for a long period of time. It was these ones that I jerked away and then held that one on. These I jerked away and then it was grab my hand and holding it down and then putting it down. But I can't recall what the damn thing looked like. That's okay. Do you remember what noise you made? Or what were you trying to? The cable. And when you moved the cable, it made a really loud noise. And were both of, um, referring to the old one and the young one, were they both in the room at that time? At which time? When my the arm burn. was burned? Yes. No, it was just the older one, but the younger one was near the door. Not in, but out, outside the door, rather. Could you see her, or did you just think she was there? I could hear her. What did you hear her doing? yelling at the older one. Uh, was it in English? No. Did it sound, what did the yelling sound like to you? Was it a pleasant conversation, angry no. conversation? It was an angry conversation. There's some words that I wrote down that I can remember. Right. Yeah. Do you want to move on to another, the other incident? What do you mean by other incident? For your back. Yes, I do. I'm trying to not Sherry, do you need to take a break for some food or water? And then we can come back to this. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm having the girl for the photos. So if we take a break and you can have to take some photo, take those photos of you that we talked about earlier about the uh, brand. Okay. And then we can discuss that a little bit and see where we're at for the rest of the day. You seem like you're getting tired. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe. Maybe in Hungary. I don't know. There's a few. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't want your level of frustration to get more elevated than it already I'm just is. angry that I can't, like, I'm trying to think of things and I can't actually recall them. This is, it's just getting frustrating to me. Like, well, trying to recall, like, step, because time is so. It's hard to have like a timeline of things and everything's like molding together and this happened. No, wait, this happened before it. No, but it didn't. It's okay like, I'm to... trying not to be confused by things because there was no... It's okay to be freeform where you're just kind of just throwing stuff out there okay. and not trying to piece it together because you're piecing it together is not, it's just not going to work for you right now. So just throwing it out there, say, well, I remember this. And if you say, do you remember if it's before or after? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. What, tell me about this. Tell me, just getting that stuff out versus trying to put it in some sort of timeline for okay. you. Just doesn't seem like it's working for you. Okay. And it's, it's, like it's increasing your anxiety and <laughs> okay. tolerance level. Yeah, okay. So if you want to take some time, you want to. Like right where you stand right here. Okay. Chill in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Crime Circus family, thank you very much for watching this video. That's what Sherry had to say for herself four days after Thanksgiving, after she was returned home after her fake adult napping. Leave me a comment, smash the like button, hit me up inside of Patreon. Patreon is another website where you can help support this channel. There's various tiers for all different budgets. And you can also become a YouTube member to help support the show as well. I run two YouTube channels, Crime Circus and Crime Circus Cult. Please make sure you're subscribed to both with bell notifications turned on. If bell notifications aren't turned on, you may not get notified about new releases. And even if they are turned on, you also may not get notified. But at least it's better odds. I've got a lot more goodies in store, a lot more surprises, a lot more videos that you couldn't imagine I've been able to obtain. I've actually got over 100 interrogations I've never released, but these videos take time. I take care and effort into each and every single release. I could just upload the raw files, but that'd be embarrassing and I don't like to be embarrassed. So I spend a lot of time enhancing the footage as much as possible for you, the viewer, because I truly do believe you deserve it. Anyways, until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.